Okay, thank you everybody for the first uh, FINERAC track, FINERAC and FinTech track in the in ApacheCon. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, we are going to kickstart this, uh, this track with this panel uh, discussing the, what is called the present of FINERAC. What are we doing, how we come here, and, and, and what is the, the things that we are working on in this uh, in this awesome community um the the panelists that we have today are ed cable ed is the president and ceo of uh of the um mifos initiative it's a pioneering catalyzing community growth and financial inclusion innovation as the leader of the global open source mifos community for the past decade Pierce at the compelling intersection of financial inclusion and open source technology. He's very well in fintech, very well versed in fintech in multiple dimensions. Also, James Daly uh, is the board chair and founder of the MIFOS Initiative, the open source community that created and then contributed the FINRAC code base. He works at the intersection of financial inclusion and energy inclusion in the global south. A serial entrepreneur, James has created several social ventures and open source projects aimed at solving big, hairy problems. He sits on the FINERAC PNC and helps with identifying gaps and strategies. Lastly, Michael is a long time, Michael Boborger is a long time open source, open sourcer who over the years has been involved in too many projects to enumerate. He started in Floss one fateful night many months ago through a friendly interaction with a maintainer on an IRC channel of what was then the MIFOS project. Ever since, he has been actively supporting the humanitarian open source platform for financial inclusion that is now known as Apache Finerac in a volunteer capacity, currently employed by Google, previously at Red Hat, uh, Red Hat uh, and, 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 and it's uh, one of our biggest contributor in the community. And myself, Javier, who I am the founder and CEO of Twitter, I'm being involved in the MIFOS community since 2014, and I've been involved in the, in the FinTech industry since 2009. And also I'm the chair of, of the FINERAC track. So um, James, I, the floor is yours for this, uh, for this event. Great, thank you, Javier. And I hope my uh, my sound levels are good. Let me know if I'm speaking too softly. Um, so I think uh, what I want to do is go through a series of questions, and I'm going to ask one of you. And if if you have a, another response, please you know jump right in, and we'll we'll make this a, a dynamic dialogue. Uh, and uh, so I think my first question is, um, what is Fenerac? Um, there might be a lot of differences of opinions, but uh, I think at a core, we can define it. Um, and I'm going to ask uh, Ed to jump in with a definition of, of FINERAC. Okay, thanks, James. And thank you, Javier, for bringing us all together today. Looking forward to this panel. So, you know, at its core, you know, I would say FINERAC is a open source core banking platform. And so we had its origins in being able to manage the back offices of traditional microfinance institutions. And now we're managing, you know, digital banks that don't have any back office. So it provides all of those core capabilities to actually run a bank, whether it's digital or brick and mortar. So that is, you know, creating customers, creating accounts, managing a portfolio of loan products, savings products. And now, you know, Finteract is continuing to evolve to actually integrate with real-time payment systems, provide a suite of interfaces to allow omni-channel banking experiences, so if you're a fintech, if you're a financial institution, you know, Finerac can serve as this open source core banking platform to manage your end-to-end -end operations. So at a high level, I'll leave it at that, James. Yeah, that's great. Um, Javier, uh, I think your company is is involved in using Finerac. Can you say something about what yeah. that's like? So um, for, for us, Finerac, it's a, it's, a, it's a platform for innovation. You know? 
it, it makes uh, we work with fintechs all over the world, and 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 Finirac, it's a great platform for 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 fintechs and for startups to start at the same level uh, of the competition. So, like five years or ten years ago, if you wanted to start a financial institution from scratch, you needed to invest hundreds, if not millions, of dollars in technology. Now you need you, you can do that basically for a, a, a fraction of that and that will allow and it's allowing a lot of innovation on the financial space and that is what is, is exciting for us to work with Finerac because uh it allows innovators it allows entrepreneurs and also it allows the 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 the, the people that is working in the financial institutions to quickly innovate and to quickly work on things that they 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 used they didn't were able to to test before because the cost of testing was so high. If you're working in a bank or in a financial institution with a core banking, traditional core banking, changing anything in the core banking, it's very expensive and it's very time resourcing. Um, and doing that is as a side project with Finerac, it, 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 it is almost inexpensive uh, for, for more financial institutions. So for us, Finerac, it's a platform to, to innovate and to sit on top of it and to generate the next level of innovations. Terrific. Thank you, Javier. Michael, um, how does this project differ from other open source projects that you've been involved in? And you've got a long list of, of open source projects that you've been uh, engaged in. So how is this different? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to um, uh, add the community aspect here. Of course, agreeing with everything that Ed and Javier, you were saying, but um, for me personally, what really distinguishes Finrac from other open source communities um, is that um, it's a very vibrant community, right? We have got people from all walks of life, from all over the world that contribute to this platform, um, coming to this uh, group with different experiences, different motivations also um, for why they're participating, but all coming together around uh, a community um, where each brings their part to the, to the table. Um, I think what is particularly different from other open source communities um, is the variety of backgrounds, the geographical diversity, um, the longevity also. We've been around for a while, right? Um, or existed from way before uh, Apache Finoac was incubated. Um, I have people I met uh, 10 years ago that I'm in touch with today through Finoac. And um, I think that's a, a, a great aspect of this project. Thank you. Um... Yeah, just James, to add on top of what both Javier and Michael said, you know, echoing what Javier said, we really, you know, and this goes back to the vision you had from day one. So really believe that core banking software should become commoditized. So there is that common set of functionality everybody can collaborate around. And as Javier said, it really is a platform for innovations for others to, to build on top of. And then adding to what Michael said, you know, I think what he noted about the dynamism and the vibrancy of our communities, both in opportunity and a challenge as we have contributors from all walks of life working in our community and we've got commercial companies you know interns high school students yeah. and so it's neat to see them all come together for this common vision and i think it's you know unique dynamic that we bring to apache and we have this end user community as well that's collaborating on top of this project which is something unique to us that we're eager to share the lessons we've had over the years too so. yeah i i i i, I don't want to get too far into this conversation without saying, yes, it's, it is an amazing um, set of people involved. And we have we have people, um, as, as Ed mentioned, high schoolers coming to the project, all the way to very senior um, techs and um, people with banking uh, chops and banking system experience, and then people just learning what that's about. Um, and that makes it a very vibrant conversation. Um, We've recently uh, made a major uh, release, um, Fenerac 1.4. So I know each of these topics I'm touching on are actually uh, going to be full sessions later on in the panel, um, uh, later on in the in the agenda and the schedule. But um, you know, Michael, could you just say something about um, what's the uh, uh, what's behind this recent jump in contributions and how is that? Um, how does that look today to you? 
Right. So I, that, that's that's a very good point, uh, James. Thanks you for for raising that. We've we've clearly seen a marked uptake um, over the last twelve-ish months or so. Our community has really kind of um, reinvigorated itself. Um, it was it was always active, I would say. Um, and I have a talk in two hours, I think, or three or whatever, uh, on reinvigorating a Finneract community, where um, I've attempted to look at some of the factors that have contributed to that. But in short, um, my impression is that we really managed to, uh, you know, open the doors and, and make it a welcoming place where people can um, together uh, achieve more. I think we've, we've really sort of reignited this uh, community factor, catalyzed the community. Um, one of the things I'm going to touch upon in, in my presentation is that we probably underestimate sometimes uh, that it's not as obvious as some of us think um, how to get started in open source, how to get started in Apache. Um, uh, that is something we need to be very careful about to keep explaining, keep patiently um, showing, uh, leading. Um, and I think we've managed to do that. Um, there's probably also an effect of one thing having uh, led to another, more contributors breed more contributors, right? I think that has happened to us over the last 12 months. We've had a, a number of um, uh, great people join us in our efforts. Um, which creates this energy and this dynamism in the community. It's like, well, if I'm also going to do that if he does, and well, oh, something's happening in this community. That's, yeah. that's been the place that's been right. happening in right. Finnerac. Yeah, very, very positive. Um, so there's a um, there's an interesting relationship with the MIFOS initiative. So as I think Javier mentioned, the MIFOS initiative contributed the code to Apache, which became Fenerac. And so there, one of the things that um, is part of that is that Mifos um, still retains a set of user interfaces, community app, Android app that sits on top of, of this. So Ed, I'd like, I'd like you to sort of say something about what that relationship looks like to you, um, because you wear both the Finerac hat, you're on the PMC and you're also um, you know, the president of MIFOS. So how do you, how do you see that relationship and how do you, um, explain that to people? Because I think, um, this is one of the sources of confusion sometimes in the community. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tie this back to Michael's, you know, reply about the recent reinvigoration as well, but really, you know, we see the technical governance and the con contributions from individuals towards the core open source project happening within the confines of Apache Finract and the Apache Software Foundation and our project management committee. And then MIFOS, you know, one of our primary aims is to bring together organizations and companies to have a common table to convene around the roadmap, discuss the future of the product, which is something that the uh, Apache infrastructure, you know, isn't as conducive for in terms of organizations themselves. And then at an individual level, we also want to provide that gateway and an onboarding experience for developers, you know, new commercial companies, new volunteers who you know need a bit more handholding they need a bit more education on the mission overall and then lastly you know we want to provide some you know air coverage just about like how Finerac can be used the different use cases that can be provided and then you know at the end of the day since we are working with all of these organizations and bringing together companies you know coalescing around the roadmap we aim to really be that marketplace and secretariat hub in the middle to connect use cases with solutions, you know, help individuals from the Finrac community identify how they can contribute to these solutions, how individuals can find solutions that they can deploy. And in order to do that, you know, at Mifos, we also maintain a suite of user interfaces and reference solutions that help to demonstrate the capabilities of what's possible with the Finrac APIs. Terrific. Um, if you're just joining us, um, please go ahead and Put questions into the chat, and we will be um, getting to them a little in a little bit here. Um, I've got a few more questions for y'all, and I want to get a, more of a discussion going. So, um, generally speaking, what challenges or opportunities do you see with the code and the community? And I'm first going to go to um, Javier. <clears throat> so. There are a few, uh, there, there are a lot of challenges. The, the first challenge that we have at hand is, is how to, re as Michael, and I'm, I'm, I'm willing to see your, your presentation, Michael, how to reinvigorate the community. Uh, and, and, and 
although we have a, a, a very, a very uh, vibrant community, there's always emails, there's always stress, there's always questions. Um, and, and, and more on that, there is always uh, people that is interesting, interested in using Finerac and using um, MIFOS as a core banking application. Uh, we are seeing more and more um, fintechs and financial institutions coming to, to and asking for, for this implementation. The, 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 the big challenge is how we sustain and maintain the community and, and how we move from a past with heavy uh, sponsors that were basically supporting the entire world of the community through a distributed uh, world. Uh, and we need to grow and we need to uh, get more companies and, 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 and individuals that are contributing back in different ways, either economically, financially, <clears throat> or we code so we as a community can can move forward and, and leave behind the 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 the, the contributors the, the big contributors that we had in the past that were kind of solo supporting the community and and, and I think okay. that that is the biggest challenge yeah Ed over to you next yeah, and just to build on what Javier said and going back to what Michael said, you know, one of our biggest, you know, opportunities, but it's also a challenge is, you know, taking that reinvigorated community and contribution model that Michael has gotten jump started in really having the commercial players and the members of our ecosystem who are actually, you know, building solutions used on a daily basis on top of Finerac, getting them to, you know, be able to contribute back to the upstream development. So that's been a message, you know, we've been trying to impart over the past year is really encouraging this upstream development enabling a virtuous cycle where everybody benefits from the innovation you've been building. And then, you know, in turn, everybody can lower the overall cost of maintaining, you know, building and developing new innovation on top of the software. So I think that's one of the, you know, key challenges just to the growth of the community, but also as Javier noted, the ongoing sustainability of the community itself. And then I do think, you know, we've got a really good opportunity in front of us to just make you know, Finerac more well known. You know, this is a the fintech space is very, you know, hot and dynamic right now. And just we're doing, you know, better than a lot of like the commercial players out there. So we need to make known that there is this viable open source platform, which is accessible to all, built on the, you know, most modern technologies and demonstrate what use cases it can be, you know, used for. So people are aware of this great asset and this great community that they can work around. Um so, Michael, I want to come to you, but I, I kind of want to change this, the question a little bit from opportunities and challenges to um, maybe something around, you know, the contribution model and, and maybe have you sort of focus in on that yeah. part of the opportunities and, and challenges. Yeah, so I, I think there's there's two parts to this, and I think we've uh, spoken about the first part uh, a lot, Ed, what you were saying, uh, Javier, so I'm not going to dwell more into that. The, the, the first part being just um get people want to contribute right understand that together we can do more and, and not basically maintain forks we, we know that a number of integrators are maintaining forks of finerac um and so there's more general open source advocacy work to be done there it's like well it makes more sense for you to come and work upstream um, i think at a more you want to call it technical level or a more practical level or something i i think over the years have have genuinely learned that um it is not as obvious to many people who want to contribute to really figure out how to engage in a community like this. I think there's a number of people who are not trying to hold back any code. They're not trying to, um, you know, they don't have concerns about something being proprietary and, and, and something wanting to uh, not share, but they're generally at a loss uh, about how to engage in an open source community. If you've not done this elsewhere before, if you, if you don't um, sort of know the, the trade, if I call it like that, um, it's not that obvious, right? Like I did something, and so like you guys want this? Here it is. It's like no, no, we don't want to go looking for what you did. We want you to come and and <laughs> work in the community to propose it. Um, and here is here's something from me. I throw it over. Well, this doesn't build. Well, you guys are not going to fix this for me. No, that's not how it works. I think there are a lot of things that um, on the practical level there. We take for granted, we kind of like, oh yeah, open source, yeah, easy. 
but it, it's actually not that obvious how to do that right. And I think the best thing we can do there is 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 be helpful, be open, be uh, patient. I think that's as a community something that's very important as we grow for our future. I think we it's partially in our hands how how much we are uh, welcoming and, and help people who want to contribute so the, the second group to actually make that happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah and one thing at the Mifos, I'm oh, sorry, James, I was going to say at the Mifos initiative, you know, we're working better on just communications and visibility. So making aware all the powerful use cases that are being supported by Finneract, you know, recognizing the con contributors that Michael's been helping to onboard, and then also, you know, being more visible about what's coming in the future. So we're trying to pull together a more cohesive roadmap to showcase, you know, what's coming and what people can expect. Because I think there's, you know, still some of that lack of visibility that hinders people being aware of how they could use Finneract and where they can contribute. So. I think, James, if I can jump in with an additional thought or something, something yeah. that is a little different in the Finneract community from, from other open source projects is due to the variety of, of our um, different stakeholders and, and contributors, we get a lot of, um, I would say, less technical, less open source experience people than you would see in other communities. A lot of the more technical projects, um, but by the time you want to contribute to Kubernetes or to um, Tomcat or Apache or something like that, you're you're sort of well into the code. Um, I think in Finneract is, is a very interesting community because we get people who are users who want to contribute this small bug fix, this thing that didn't work for them that they want to share, they would like to share. Um, and it's not so obvious how. And, and so that's a little different for us. Yeah, um, let's talk a little bit more about how this this stack of technology is in some sense closer to um, the end user. Um, does that does that make it more challenging, Michael? And I think you were touching on this, so I want you to maybe expand a little bit on what you were saying there. Yeah, I think I think so. I think this is in in the sort of uh, list or ranking of open source projects. This stands out a little bit as a more functional oriented closer to end users project than many of the technical projects that you typically find out there. If you think open source, what do you think? What was the, like, tell me three open source projects that come to mind. SSL. Hey, <laughs> SSL, right, right, tech technical. Linux, kernel, um, yeah. Apache web servers, they won't be Finneract application-like. There, right. there are not that many successful um, open source applications in the sort of um, enterprise software space. Well, wow. CRMs, core banking, um, they're more, more unique beasts, and, and we're one of them. Right, right. Um, so I, I know there's a couple of uh, questions that are coming on there, so I want to get to them. Um, again, put your question in the chat, and we'll, we'll try to get to it. Um, how do we um, – uh, well, I, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, the um, – the topic of wallets, mobile money, wallets, and extensibility into AI and machine learning. And there are sessions that are going to be covering these things. But um, can we go first to uh, Javier, just comment a little bit about, you know, sort of where this might be going in terms of, uh, you know, adjacencies or, or sort of new use case, um, new use cases that are implemented on Finarac? Absolutely. So um, what what I think that is going to uh, leverage and and and, and um, project the, the next wave of financial inclusion it's 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 on top, sits on top of of mobile um, and all of all the mobile revolution that is already here is not that it's going to happen when I started to talk about the, this mobile uh, mobile finance thing it was like this is going to happen. This is going to happen, and and now it's here. Everybody has a a, 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 a smartphone, and and m most people in the planet have access to internet. So, being able to use their cell phone as a as a branch or as a banking experience, it's something that is already happening. And 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 one of the things that that I learned from this community, I remember when when we were in in one of the Mifos. Uh, presential events of Paul Maritz saying to us that the power of the open source is, sits on the standardization. 
that that the the the, the thing that that this, that open source is is how software industries uh, how the software industry creates standards and that resonated on me a lot because it makes sense because the financial in industry one thing that lacks is standards and if you see every everywhere you see there's no standard every currency every country has a currency that's a different standard every iso three implementation that you want to think it's different every transfer system from one bank to another every bank has a different core banking every financial institution so having a side project like finera that are the fact of standard uh, for for the financial inclusion for the billions of people that that are going to to be in the in the financial industry in the next 10 years it's going to is going to generate a lot of 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 uh economics of scale and it's going to be a great thing and and that's why i think that that the the companies that are using finerac to support their mobile wallets are are joining this standardization and 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 this is a thing that that is going to be uh, relevant for the future great um that was a that was a great and very complete answer. I, what I want to do is quickly go through a couple of questions. This is going to be rapid fire polling. Um, we're going to give this a try. I, you, these uh, mm -hmm. these people do not know what my questions are going to be, so um, there's no gaming going on here. Um, and you're either going to do yes, no, or in between. Okay, I'll give you I'll give you the in between. All right, so. Uh, we're going to start off with some easy ones. So, is Finerac 1.4 a major um, improvement to the code base? Yes. No, but use the thumb. Use the thumb, Ed. Okay. Um, do, do we need more contributions from the community? Yeah. Um, is the documentation on the project adequate? Ah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, good. Um, is it important to have a Finerac 1.5 re release by the end of this year? Is it important? Okay, shows momentum maybe. Um, is it important to have a Finerac CN full release by the end of the year? Ah, okay, we'll talk about that more. Um, <laughs> Should Finerac 1.x implement something like a containerized uh, microservices strategy? Finerac 1.x, should it begin to implement something like that? Ed, maybe. Okay. Um, Ed's positive on that. Um, is Finerac uh, cloud ready? ready? Finerac 1.x, is it cloud ready? Does it scale well? Does it operate okay um, in, in the cloud right now? All right. Um, do we need a separate users list from the dev list, separate from the dev list? We used to have one. So do uh, we need a separate users list again? Uh, we need a separate user yeah. list. Yes, uh, no, in between. OK, got it. Um, in between. Does OK, so back to some easy questions, maybe. Um, does financial inclusion keep you interested and motivated in this project? Sure. Yeah. And um, do you think that Finerac could be used as a core banking solution for a disruptor or a neo bank um, in a regulated market? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. We'll um, so <laughs> we've got some questions and commentary going on in the polling. Um, I have no <laughs> idea what you mean. Uh, I anyone, don't look like them at all. Yeah, you do yeah. look like <laughs> you do. Does James Daly look like John Malkovich. Okay, fine. Yes, this is not the first time that I've heard this, particularly when I give this look. Um, okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about the questions that we've gotten. So there's a lot of fintech applications out there, and some sometimes people ask, so is Finerac just like App X? Is it is it like that app that I've built, or is it like the, you know, this financial tool that I've built? Can you say maybe something about what the 
domain of Finarac is um, to try to help clarify. Um, Michael, I'd like you to sort of jump in on this if you would. Sure, yeah, so I think this question, I'm hoping I'm, I'm understanding it right. I think this question is asking about um, the functional domain, right? What Finarac covers. Yeah. Um, so Finarac is a core banking solution. Um, the, the domain entities, if you wish, if you have a technical background are accounts, clients, loans, um, savings accounts. Um, as such, um, it's more general than uh, this other thing that somebody listed here, which seems to be uh, more narrowly scoped uh, billing solution. Finrac really is some uh, mm -hmm. software package that you can run a bank with. Does that right. answer the question? Basically? Yep. yep. Um, Just yeah. Bit. No. There's and there's quite a lot written on this. Um, and uh, we do probably need to bring some of that ideas over some of those documentations over to Fenerac from Mifos from some of the original explanation because I think maybe some of that is lost in the in the documentation. Um, and in terms of how how people would get onboarded into Fenerac, what's the what's the right way for a new developer to come on to the or what's a good way for the new developer to come on to the Come on to the project, um, and I, I'll keep going back to Michael. I know you have a lot of opinions on this, so I, please tell us what yeah. you what you have yeah, for so, a guide. So I think we do have we do have two categories of, of users. We we see this on the lists, right? From the kinds of questions we get, I think there are there are those who um, use the the release software. I think there are a lot of people out there who um, have been waiting for us to release one point four. Um, who download the zip and, and start it up and run it on their server uh, somewhere. Um, and then there are those who made the step to uh, clone the source code, build it themselves, um, and uh, try to probably first locally make some changes themselves, probably not yet pushing them anywhere, but like, oh, this doesn't work the way I want. This validation is wrong. i got to fix this. Um, and, and I think our... Our mission, if if if, uh, if I can say it like that, is to uh, do the best we can to convert uh, the first group uh, to the second group, or some of the users of the first group to the second group. I think as an open source project, um, one of the value propositions that we bring is that, well, it's open source, so that um, you don't write to the list uh, saying this is broken, although that's helpful. Of course, it's helpful. We value end user feedback. Of course, that's, that's useful. But this is broken and I fixed it and here's a fix is really where I think the the, the value of, of having an open source core banking solution is. Okay, thank you. I think I, I like that answer. Um, uh, can we can we also talk a little bit about what this community looks like in, um, well, I'm gonna pause on that. That's gonna be my next question. I'm gonna go to a question that I saw here on the list here um, where there's uh you know there's code debt um ed do, do you see um you know the number of tickets um that are on jira as an indication of code debt or as an indication of community um engagement and uh right go ahead and try to tangle with that one yeah, so, so I think it's both because we encourage people when they have, you know, a new feature that they'd like to see to create a ticket on Jira. So that, you know, wouldn't be a measure of code debt. That's actually, you know, interest and demand and wanting to see new innovation get built. And then I think, you know, the more small bugs and issues get identified, that's also a measure of the health of the community and the engagement. But I do think, you know, there are a number of tickets in the backlog that Michael has been able to resurrect and begin to address that do, you know, measure the technical debt that is there in the community. So I think, yeah, the size of the, the number of issues, you know, isn't a direct measure of the technical debt, but I think we are doing a good job of trying to, you know, catalog what's in the backlog, identify what is actually technical debt, what's new innovation that could be worked on. And then this last release, you know, to speak to what Salil's question was there, we did address a number of those pieces through volunteers, interns, and we know, you know, there are a number of outstanding pieces that we'd encourage anybody in the community especially, you know, those partners or individuals who might have already addressed this technical debt on their local forks to, you know, jump on the mailing list, discuss what you've already built and begin contributing back. Because, you know, as Michael has noted, 
he's very welcoming there, encouraging and don't be scared to yeah raise your hand and show that you've got something to share. So. And and I think it is it is probably appropriate to throw in here that the 1.4 release is a major step forward in technical debt reduction. I, I think sometimes we are we're, we're maybe forgetting how much we we uh, we achieved, right? So so let's give that a shout out to all the contributors we've had. Some great Google Summer of Code contributors, some people who've um, joined us um, uh, as a, aside from their day jobs, spending weekends. I mean, we've moved from um, Java 8 to Java 11. We've upgraded all of our third-party dependencies. Um, we have fixed uh, a couple of security issues. Um, the 1.4 release was a big step forward, a big jump in technical debt reduction. Um, yep. Yep. No, I... Yeah, and I think also, yeah, the proactive measures too, Michael, that Montan has implemented. So, you know, we're going to improve the code quality and the cleanliness of the code on a future basis. So you know, we can not have like all of this unclean code going forward in the future. So that'll be a big proactive improvement. I, I think it's great that you mentioned that, yeah, that you um, remind that to everyone. So we, we have now automated code quality checks, which will help us um, likely for years going forward, maybe. Yeah, um, there's a question on the list, on the chat over there about um, testing. And um, what's, our, what's our current coverage on um, code uh, that's tested, you know, the automated testing, the integrated testing, um, uh, CI, CL, what, what do you, and then Michael, you set up something that, that I thought was really, um, terrific, um, on the Google infrastructure. Can you talk a little bit about that? I'm going to go to you first on that. Right. So, um, we actually, one of the, uh, Google Summer of Code contributions from, from Manthan, one of our students who did a great job was actually test coverage. Um, so there is a, a command now that we can run to see test coverage. I don't have the number in, in my mind, so I, I can't tell you what the number is in terms of integration test coverage, but the infrastructure is there to measure that. Um, the, what you're referring to, James, is the um, um, always up uh, runtime environment, something that um, helps us, I think, to demonstrate our platform and let people try it out and, and find so, um, uh gaps and, and problems in it. So we have at on finrack.dev, we have a server that runs the code uh, permanently. Um, there's a talk about that as well a little later. I think it's on Wednesday where um, we explain more how we set that up. That is one way, I think. I think there's there's others, but I think there's one way how to um, make the, the system easily accessible and, and let users you know, try it out, find uh, uh, problems, really do quality control on in a always up centralized place. I think that was an important step for our community to have the latest and greatest code always always up there and, and running. Um, I, I would say more generally in terms of uh, quality, we obviously rely on the community. This is a community project, right? If somebody thinks that there is minions somewhere who do QA magically at the Apache Foundation, that's not how it works, right? There are no, Apache Software Foundation staff who test Finoract or anything like that. that. That's not how open source or project loose works. The, the code is um, as stable and, and as at the quality as we as a community make it to be, right? If you're listening to this and you know of a problem, um, if you have the skill sets to fix it yourself, contribute. If you um, know about a problem but don't have the skill set to fix it, raise a bug about it on Jira, ask on the mailing list if somebody wants to engage and work with you to get it fixed. We have examples of where this works, right? Um, a few days ago, somebody posted a, a functional feature not working. You couldn't attach notes to savings accounts. And this was pretty amazing. I, I want to I wanna give a shout out to that, right? That was posted like last Friday or Monday or something. And um, one of our star contributors jumped at it and was like, oh, yeah, this sounds fun. What is, what is going on here? Let me test this. I can see it's broken. Give me a day pull request. We reviewed it, merged it, and this bug is fixed. That was pretty cool, right? You don't get that in. Yeah. You don't get that from some of your commercial vendors at that speed. <laughs> yeah. But it relies, on, it relies on people raising issues on the list, and it relies on um, people contributing fixes on, on, on the upstream project. Yep, yep. And that's and that's a virtuous cycle that we were talking about earlier and that you were highlighting is, uh, is how you get more fixes because somebody does a contribution and people say, oh, it's an active project. People are making it better. I'm going to also get involved, you know? It's it's a lonely thing if you're trying to build something by yourself. It's a fun thing when you've actually got this community of people trying to to bring things in. Um, so 
I don't know how much time we have. I think we're really close on, on time here. Yes, so we have one minute. One minute. Really quick, in a few words, how are, what is this going to look like in, um, in three years? Uh, Javier, really quick. So I think that we are going to see a bigger community and, and, and we are going to see. Okay, that's good. Or... That's good. That's more than three words. Ed, go. <laughs> We're going to beat 100 million individuals through the platform. Michael, you get last word. More contributors with more varied backgrounds, more functional contributions also. They're harder All than right. technical ones. Thank you. It's been my pleasure um, to, to host this. We have a lot more going on on this track and um, look forward to seeing many of you later on. Thank you, James, for moderating. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, thanks, everyone. Thank you for moderating, James.